If you've never had a more testosterone levels, let's say you start TRT at, you know, like when I did, like 24, 25. I had some big changes. I had puberty part two. When I first started, I wanted to have that full level of service. And so we've, we've replicated that. I mean, my approach has always been, are you needle phobic? I mean, what are the issues? What's going to work with your lifestyle the best? What, what would you prefer? The natural testosterone production has a daily rhythm. So it's actually okay to have that with something like cream or even with injections to have a bit of fluctuation. As long as you're not blowing through the roof and crashing through the floor, there can be some variability. Human being is a very complex series of interconnected systems that is sentient. Mm. And that is way more complicated than just going, yeah, take the TRT, see you later, you'll be fine. I was going to ask you, I think some practical steps for, for patients and maybe we can walk them through through the journey. I mean, I can tell the, the journey for, through, through balance my hormones. Uh, you have, I guess, that question, you think something's not right. And, and that's why people would then, they, they look up, oh, TRT or, you know, TRT in the UK or wherever they're looking it up. You know, they find our company, Balance My Hormones. And usually the first step is getting a, you know, blood test and obviously the realization they may have symptoms. We've got, you know, symptom questionnaires and symptom surveys. I know some societies say, yep, those are great. Others are like, oh, you know, you, you don't do a TRT based off of just a symptom yeah. survey questionnaire. And, and with which we don't. There's a combination of biomarkers as well as we, we've got to know what the symptoms are. And the questionnaire is just one way to, yeah. to document it. So they get two blood tests and people are often, well, why do I need to have two, right? Why do I need to have two? Usually they should be, you know, not so near each other in, in time. It should be spaced out in time, you know, mm -hmm. uh, up to a few weeks, a week, you know, so you, you're not just looking at a, at a one-off. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on, on that part of the process? Uh, the blood testing and the biomarkers, how important do you think that those bits are? I think the fact that you do two blood tests to diagnose is fantastic. I think that should be a, that should be a standard. I think that's phenomenal because as you've, I'm sure, seen, is that testosterone levels fluctuate with the wind, have natural production, and especially if you, you know, sleep poorly the night before, maybe you had a cheap meal the day before, and you weren't aware that that was going to be something that you shouldn't do before your blood test, even if you have a big workout the day before. You know, these are things that can, that can impact your levels, so the more markers you have, the better. But when it comes to looking at symptoms versus blood work, like you said, it's a combination of health both. You can't just look at one or the other. And the difficult thing about symptoms of low testosterone is that if you have a list of all the low testosterone symptoms, they're quite ambiguous. There's a lot of yeah. things that can cause that. I mean, if you take a list of low testosterone symptoms in men and hypothyroid symptoms, yeah, in I was men, just going to say, yeah, they look the same. Like the same. Yeah. Um, so, but there's also a whole bunch of diet and lifestyle factors I've been talking about before that will also cause those symptoms, plus the psychological things yeah. as well huge amount of factors. So what, what I like to look at is I like to look at getting a, as comprehensive of a, of a test as possible. I like to look at everything. I like to get a snapshot of everything together so we can measure, okay, well, what are your testosterone levels? But how's your liver? How's your kidneys? How, how's your HbA once seen? How's your thyroid? How's your adrenal hormones? All of these different things. And then the more you can learn about the client or patient, the more you're going to be able to go, okay, where does this match? Mm. You know, if someone is you know, jacked through the roof, like we were speaking about before, off air, things like prolactin, cortisol being elevated, and they're like, yeah, I've got chronic pain, or I've got it, you know, quite a big, I'm getting divorced, like a big psychological yeah. thing going on. There are so many factors that sometimes people feel the way that they're supposed to feel because of how they live. I mean, if someone comes to me and they go, hey, you know, my, my libido's shot, and like, I'm, I'm not waking up with morning erections, and I don't feel well, and I'm like, what's going on? They're like, oh, I just got promoted to the CEO of my, my company, and I'm getting divorced from my so it can sometimes be difficult for people to go, okay, do I feel the way that I should feel based on my inputs and outputs? And sometimes they do. Or do they feel like there's something wrong in terms of like, hey, I'm, I'm living pretty well, you know, six, seven out of 10. I'm, I'm doing things right. And I'm, you know, I'm not old, you know, 30s, 40s, but I feel bad. I'm living like a six, seven out of 10, but I feel like a three. Mm -hmm. That's when we want to go, okay, let's run a comprehensive test to see what's going on. And I think, you know, my friend, Dr. Charles Barnes in America, who had this saying a couple of years ago, which I love, which is that if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if you're just someone who just tests test testosterone, it's like, yeah, I've got the panacea for you. All your problems, no. I think it's very important that we look at all the blood work together because sometimes someone might have Hashimoto's. Sometimes yeah. someone might have you know, low DHEA. That's very important for libido and energy. So it's important that we look at everything to work out and go, is TRT going to be the intervention that's going to get you what you need from this? And 
are your symptoms matching up with your blood work, matching up with your lifestyle, or do we need to perform first? So, so on, on our blood test panel, our comprehensive one, I mean, we have DHEA, cortisol, yeah. thyroid hormones, thyroid antibodies. Yeah. And lots of people say, why do you test them? Because, you know, we want to get a look in to see, you know, is something else going on in addition to the low testosterone, to the LH, the FSH? I mean, you've got like 65 different items on on the panel, not to mention all your normal FBCs and the cholesterol, or, you know, the, the lipid panel, the biochemistry, and even looking at um, everything from one of our tests, we've got zinc, but the most standardized test is folate. And we've got a whole range of the, of the vitamins, as well, not a whole range, but some of the vitamins as well that may influence uh, vitamin D3, may influence uh, the testosterone because if your D3 is low, maybe that's, that's a part of the a cause for it. Yeah. So, and it's, you know, it's hard to bring the level up enough, even with supplements and definitely not with getting sun. Mm -hmm. And then obviously if you have vitamin D3, it's always a good idea of K2 and magnesium, yep. not necessarily in the same capsule, yep. but you should take them at the same time. But I, I suppose after the blood tests, you know, then we, uh, they've got the option. Usually we'll send them over to talk to the doctor, but we also have, you know, coaches or case managers like what, what you do to also support them in, in that endeavor. And then, because you want to get an understanding and what we like to do is be able to you know, have them as, as many questions answered as possible. Because there's different ways to do the, do the TRT. You could just do the traditional model and just send the patient directly to the doctor and then you have to have multiple follow-ups. Yep. And that could be a pathway. But we like to try to get all that busy work out of the way, get all the biomarkers out of the way, get all that done, sorted. Maybe they can speak to someone, a you know, patient advocate, patient coach, uh, to see what it's like. And then when they're ready, go to the doctor. And I think that, that works really well. I don't know, you may have seen that in, in other clinics. Yeah, I think that model is by far the best model because the human being is a very complex series of interconnected systems that is sentient. Mm. And that is way more complicated than just going, yeah, take the TRT, see you later, you'll be fine. And that does work well with some guys. Like if you're someone who, um, you know, let's say you're living perfectly, you're doing everything right, you get a testicular injury playing sport, and then you put the TRT back in and everything was perfect already. Simple. Yeah. Fantastic. But that's not the case with the majority of guys, especially the longer the hypogonadism has gone on, the more they're going to need support and help with this. TRT is, is a big thing. If you've never injected anything before, it's, you know, you're having to learn about needles. Yeah. It's, a big, it, it, it's quite invasive. But there's also a lot of changes that are going to occur in your body. If you've, been, if you've never had a normal testosterone level, so let's say you start TRT, at, you know, like when I did, like 24, 25, I've never had optimal testosterone levels a day in my life. I had some big changes. I had puberty part two. Yeah, um, that's what I've called it before too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do a second puberty. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is something I see a lot with my clients is that if you get someone in their, in their late 20s and they go, oh, I, I used to have my temper under control and, and now I'm, I'm like, you didn't have a temper to begin with. Yeah. You were just placid. So it, it can be quite a, a shock to the system. And, you know, you, sometimes you can get acne from the changing yeah. hormone levels. Sometimes you can get a bit of insomnia because your nervous system's a bit more stimulated, especially when you first start. Sometimes there can be a honeymoon period. Sometimes you can find yourself in a situation in life that you've gotten to where you are because you were soft and placid. And now you're in a situation where maybe you're in a job you don't like, maybe you're in a relationship that you don't like, maybe you're in all these circumstances that holistically are now quite overwhelming because you're starting to feel different and all these different things are going on and you need someone in your court to actually speak to to go hey yeah this has happened before this kind of stuff's normal to coach you through it to understand the changes that are happening yeah. in your body not hey take this see you for 15 minutes in six months time and you're on your own good yeah. luck and then you end up in an internet forum filled with, filled with a whole bunch of guys who were also lost in the forest and you're going up to them going, hey, give me directions to get out of here. They're well lost too. And this is why it's so important that there is obviously doctor contact so that there can be a prescribing doctor. But I think it's important that there is a, a health coach or a patient care coordinator or someone in that role to be able to work maybe on a, a bit more of a casual basis, maybe on a bit more of a, a higher time involvement basis or more frequent contact point basis to go, how are you going? What's going on? How do you feel? Are you, are you having any issues? Because as you've seen, some guys hyper respond, some guys hyper respond. Sometimes there's more issues going on that we have to work with. If TRT was straightforward, the industry wouldn't be what it is because there are so many times that we need to actually work with more complex cases to help guys out. And it's important that infrastructure is there for them. So I think that it's great that that's the model that you're running and it's the model that I run as well yeah, because 
it's a model that's built around what people actually need. Yeah, and it, it takes a lot, you know, lots of staff, but I think it's definitely worth it. And, and we've always found it because that's what, when I first started, that's, that was my approach. I was, it was just me. Yep. And I wanted to have that full level of service. And so we've, we've replicated that. I think a lot of patients when they first start looking at, at TRT, the, it's going now to the more, I guess, pragmatic side. What, you know, which modality is, is better? Yep. You know, should I do injections? Should I do creams? And yep. I mean, my approach has always been, well, you know, are you needle phobic? I mean, what are the issues? What's going to work with your lifestyle the best? What, what would you prefer? And I know there's a lot of you know, testosterone doctors out there that talk about, you know, cream and just cream only, only cream others, you know, only injections. We like to have all the options on the table. I, I, you know, some things work better for others. I've tried the cream in the past. Yeah. I currently use in, injections. Yeah. What would you, you know, say to people about, you know, any preference? To, you know, yeah, I, and I, I'm the opposite of yourself. Yeah. I was on injections for six and a half, seven years. I've been on cream for six months, purely due to availability. And I'd be happy to go back to injections, but I prefer the cream. It sounds like my clinic in Australia, Primal Zone, runs very similar to yours, is that we like to have both available. Yeah. One, just for people's choice. Some people go, I don't want to inject. It's not that I'm afraid of needles. I just don't want to. Cool. That's fair. I don't want to stab myself either. Um, other people don't want to do cream because of transference, especially around intimacy. That makes sense as well. Maybe they're, you know, in Australia, we have a lot of guys that work on the mines. If yeah. you have a beanie, it's take it with you. So many different reasons why one might be more suited than the other, just based on preference. But also I like to look at it based on response. And I prefer if someone doesn't have a preference, they're like, what can you tell me? Yeah. You're the expert, right? I tend to go with injections because more guys are going, injections are going to work more consistent. If we put a hundred guys on injections, we're going to have a hundred guys respond to injections within a spectrum. There'll be an outlier, but most guys mm. are going to fall around a certain point. If you put a hundred guys on cream, we're now at the point where, well, what pharmacy are they getting it made at? Is it liposomal? Is it a Trevis base? Is it HRT base? What availability do they have for that? Are they putting it on right? Are they shading their screw yeah. properly? Are they leaving it long enough before they pull their yes. underwear up? Are they having a shower? And then There's you've got, it seems in my experience that even if let's say we could control for all those variables, which we can't, but let's say we could, we get more guys who res don't just don't respond to cream. Yeah. I've had a bunch of guys who are like, I'm doing everything right. They're on, you know, two clicks of 20% of uh, cream twice a day. So 200 milligrams right. of topical testosterone a day. And their levels look like they're taking 100 milligrams for injections a week. So I'd prefer injections from a consistency standpoint. It makes it easier. But if you're going to be doing TRT for the rest of your life, I think, and I don't want to overcome yeah, yeah, yeah. people, but if you want to try both, try both. If, if you're like, hey, I want to try cream for six months just to see if I prefer it, why not? Like, you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life. It's your hormone intervention. I think that that's a fantastic idea. And I, I feel great doing the cream. I, I've been on it for a long time, so it didn't really make that much of a difference for me. But I think having both options for people is great. And I think that people should, if they want to, if you're happy doing what you're doing and you're thriving, yeah. don't break something. Don't try to fix something that isn't broken. But if you want to try the other one, try the other one. And then, but get dialed in on whichever one well, you're doing yeah. so that that way you can revert back and go, okay, I'm going to start with this. Let's get my levels to a point that I'm happy, you're happy, I feel good, I'd be happy doing this for the rest of my life, and then let's try the other one on the night and always go back. I, someone says, this is my level, they've got a blood test back. Uh -huh. And I say timing is everything, and it's all about context. So mm -hmm. what time did you get the level? So if you, yeah. you applied the cream to your scrotum, are you testing 12 hours, 24 hours, yep. three hours, some of the, the old literature about topicals in general, just, oh, just test three or four hours after you apply. Yeah. Which, okay, you're great for three or four hours, but what happens when the next application comes to you, which is 12 hours yep. or 24 hours, did yep. you not mention, you know, measure at the trough? Because there can be some variability, yep. again, with absorption for how, how they absorb it. Yep. But so often, kind of in this space, you'll hear people, my levels are this. Yep. Well, your levels are only this on that time, yep. at that point in time before, and, yep. and based on what you've done before, as far as when your previous injection was. So if you, you had measured a day before your injection, you're not quite at your trough yet, yep. and you're going to still... That's going to, the number's going to be changing over time. It's going to be decreasing over time, right? And so your level is not one number. It's, it's yep. variable. Yep. I mean, is, is that what you see as well? But it, it kind of it frustrates me because I, I hear these people say, this is my number. I did the cream. But maybe that's not 
okay, maybe if you were, and this is interesting as well, maybe if we measured you a bit earlier and it, and it, it falls off very quickly, yeah. but how do you feel? And you feel good, but your levels are only, you know, maybe 20 nanomoles per liter. Yeah. Well, maybe that's okay because the rest of the time you're, you know, 40 and 30, but it just moved through, through very quickly. This is where I think there's a lot of nuance because one thing that, and, and I often comment on this in groups because it comes up all the time for guys who've been on treatment for like a year or two years. You've been stable for a while. You've had a few blood tests and you're like, my levels are completely different every time I get my blood drawn, even though I've been doing it. And I often say to people, if even if you do a daily injection at the same time every day and you get your blood work done at the same time, it can still fluctuate yeah. like 30%. Yeah. Um, so it can sometimes be confusing for people around the numbers. And this is why, and, and I'm sure you're the same, numbers are a ballpark. Yeah. Numbers are a proxy for your overall antigen activity. And something that Dr. Neil Rousier talks about is he has this, he has a theory that the testosterone works at the receptor site for longer than the half-life as well. It activates the receptor for a bit longer. So, you know, if someone, for example, like myself is, is only doing cream once a day and the literature shows, okay, well, after 24 hours, I'm going to have 50% uh, of my levels that I had previously. I don't wake up feeling like half the man I felt. Yes, like exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some days I forget to put it on till the afternoon because I feel great. And... It's also important to recognize that natural testosterone production has a daily rhythm. So it's actually okay to have that with something like cream or even with injections to have a bit of fluctuation. As long as you're not blowing through the roof and crashing through the floor, there can be some variability. And, and like you said, when it comes to getting your blood work done, particularly with cream, you know, my, my friend, Dr. Keith Nichols, he measures at four to six hours. I don't want to get that wrong. Yeah, four to six yeah. hours. Uh, because that's going to be, if you're putting it on twice a day, that's going to represent your average point yeah. over, the, over, the, over the course. If I'm doing it once a day, for me personally or with, with my clients, I like to measure at peak and trough and go, this is the journey mm. that we're traveling over. But I sure as shit need to know which one's which. Yeah. Because I don't want to measure a peak level and think that's trough or measure a trough level yeah. this peak. So that's where there can be some nuance to this and different providers who have different preferences on, on where to measure it as long as you know which one's which. Yeah. It's like with thyroid. Some people prefer to measure the thyroid after they take it in the morning. Yeah. Some people prefer it at trough. As long as you know which one's which and you get it right, it's going to be the preference of the provider because at the end of the day, the blood work is a tool for the provider to be able to do that job. And the big factor is, yeah, we need to have a blood test so that we know that we're within the ballpark. We're not through the roof or crashed out to nothing. But the biggest overarching factor when in conjunction with the blood work is well how do you feel yeah and that's where it's important that we're looking at blood and we're looking at symptom resolution because we need people to feel good but we also need them to be objectively healthy and i like to talk to guys about we want the objective health and we want the subjective health we want the all the health markers to be moving in the right direction and we also want you to actually be feeling the way that you want to feel as well and i think that it's it's very important when there's now we're dealing with different injection schedules, different cream application schedules. There's a whole bunch of nuance to this as well as people having, you know, complicating medical conditions, mm -hmm. diet, lifestyle yeah. factors. It's so important that guys don't try to do this themselves and work with someone who has experience with this because, and I'm sure you're the same, yeah. when guys come to me and they go, look, I, I, I've got this thing going on, like I'm not sure I've seen it before. Like people, there's, there's patterns, right. there's, there's things that happen that, there's templates and there's patterns that we can see. And it's very important that we prevent issues happening with guys on their optimization journey rather than trying to fix something after it's gone. So if you're considering testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, why not reach out to one of our doctors at Balance My Hormones, where you can get just a simple advice call for only $59.95. Also, whilst you're watching the channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you get the latest content from Balance My Hormones. Until next time, this is Mike and wishing you the best of health.